So today we're going to be revisiting our Makita wall. I'm here in our studio workshop. This is a room that we've been working on for the past year. We've been able to get it pretty much finished. We've got our router in here and our laser. We've boxed in this back wall to house two of our big red uh, toolboxes. So what we've ended up with here is two bays which are ideal for a foam wall and that was no accident. So we've kind of put in spotlights above both sides and obviously on this side we're going to be redoing our Makita wall. So we do get a lot of questions, people are asking us how it's held up. I mean we made this wall here two years ago. Uh, now we do use these tools fairly regularly. Every week we'll use and certainly the drills and the batteries. Some of the tools don't see as much use but we obviously renovated this unit. You saw um, recently we did the unit tour. I was very much involved using these very tools. This product is Shadow Foam Original, which is our ori original grade of foam, our old grade of foam, and this is a polyurethane. So our new grade, uh, Shadow Foam, was originally called Easy Peel, is a polyethylene grade, so it's far more durable. Uh, we still have a broad range of colours, but it's a much more sustainable manufacturing process and we can recycle any offcuts and any waste. We get a lot of questions about how hard wearing it is and uh, the main criticisms usually are, will the items fall out? or how's the foam going to help hold up. Now, this is two years old and we have got a few marks. You can see a little mark here and a little mark here. And with Shadow Foam Original being less durable than the new grade, you can get these little bits of damage. But overall, the regular just taking tools in and out hasn't strained or damaged the foam. So it's held up really, really well to say this is two years old. So for version two of the wall, we're going to change up the logo. We're going to change up the layout. We're going to set up a battery station, charger and battery mounts. We're going to include some new tools that we've added to our Makita set and we're going to change it from the old Shadow Foam original to the new polyethylene grade of Shadow Foam. So let's get started. So these bays that we've made here are just over 1.5 meters um, and the maximum sheet size that we can do is two meters by one meter. So with this bay here, we're gonna go for 1.53 wide and then we're gonna go for the full one meter, which will bring it down to about here. So we'll end up with um, a foam wall that's just above uh, these sockets and this light switch. So exactly as we planned it. So all we need to do now is put a bottom rail here um, which will hold the foam sheet on the wall and we'll have a really snug friction fit there. Yeah, so let's get, let's get that bottom rail cut. What an anti-climax. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously it looks um, ugly like that, we need, to, we need to do something. Now we were going to paint it the same shade of grey, but then um, we had the idea of using some black gloss vinyl, which we had, this was, I think we bought a whole roll of this and we used it for one of the exhibitions we went to and we've still got a bunch of it left. I think we're going to cover it first with a layer of the vinyl and then we'll probably secure it to the wall and then we'll put another sticker over the top which will cover the screw head. So I think that should give us quite an effective rail which won't really draw the eye when the wall's up. So yeah, let's get that sorted. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's actually stuck down a lot better too. The heat's actually made it stick far better. That's a top tip. If you're, if you're ever uh, vinyl wrapping a 2 before, use a heat gun. Right, 
right, so now we just need a sticker over the top and then we can test fit. Well, actually, we'll test fit our foam first. Make sure that this fits. Yeah, so I can see that's going to fit there perfectly. Great stuff. And what we're going to do, we're going to use um, panels. We actually didn't have um, any of the large format sheets in red at the moment. So we do have 1.2 by 550 sheets available. So we're going to use some of those and we're going to put these behind. So we'll end up with um, the same dual color approach. We're going to cut all the way through. On anything that's shallower, we'll just cut the shape out and put the red in the back but that'll give us that two-tone effect. So if something's missing, we'll see the red color showing through. So I'll just stick a bit of vinyl over the top of those screw heads and then we'll get on to figuring out the layout. Last thing to do now is to sort out the layout. We need to figure out where the logo is going to go and figure out the layout. We know we've got a nice tight fit in the wall. So uh, yeah, let's go and get that sorted. I think we need a bit more space than in here though. So let's, let's go over to our band saw. Right, so this is a much better spot to uh, figure out a layout. Obviously it was a bit cramped in the workshop. So we've come out to our band knife and we've brought all of the Makita tools that we're gonna to be putting in the wall. So this is typically one of the trickier parts of the job, to be honest. I'm more than happy building a wall, but coming up with a layout takes a bit of time. So we're gonna try and figure out something that kind of, we wanna get a logo in here and we also wanna get our drills low down. That's what we use the most. So we're gonna kind of use a similar idea to the last design, but we've got a few more tools to get in here. So yeah, let's get started. I think we've got a layout there, I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got the two combi drills at the bottom and then the two impactors, same as we had it in the last layout. Uh, then we've got the blower and the heat gun in the same row. And that basically gives us a nice, we've got a good 40, 50 mil gap on the edge. We've got the triggers all going the same way and it just kind of looks like a nice row there. And we've got a nice 30, 40 mil gap between all these items. Now we're gonna go for a shield in the middle. So that is the first thing we're gonna do. So now we've got a layout, the actual first thing we need to do is take a photograph. Now we can take them all away and we'll find the exact center and we'll put a shield there and we'll cut shadow foam in. So that's the next job. We're gonna cut the shape out here, peel it back and then insert the red foam. We should end up with a really nice flush logo, uh, which should look really cool. So first thing I've got to do is make sure it's in the center and then we can start cutting. So we've cut um, all the way around the shield uh, and I'm, I think we've, we've got that pretty accurate. Obviously it's all by hand, so it's not gonna be like a machine finish, but it should be a pretty good finish there. And that's what you're kind of looking for. I've cut all the way around it and you can't really see where I've cut unless I press down on the foam. So it's kind of undetectable and that's what we're shooting for. And then now I've just got to go back round and then just make that little very shallow cut that I've made, make that a lot deeper. And then we can peel back the foam and we can put in a layer of this. Right, so I've cut the back uh, off this. I've, I've made it a little bit thinner so I don't have to cut all the way in um, 30 mil with the red. We've cut um, the shape out, we've peeled back the top layer of the foam so that's, that's come out nice. And we've just used the same technique as we would use if we were cutting in a spanner or any other tool. We've cut around it, we've peeled it back and now we've got kind of the, the SF lettering showing through here and we've got the shield template. So we're gonna use the piece that we just cut 
as our guide and we're going to cut around that the same as we did with this except for obviously we just cut straight the, the way through on this one and then we can push that in and we should achieve quite a good two-tone effect so let's give it a go We glued this in overnight. We finished off cutting the logo and then we used some of our fantastic elastic glue. Now this glue is a flexible glue and we include it in our cutting kits. And it's typically used for if you make a mistake or if you, you want to change the position of a tool, you can glue the piece of foam back in. Uh, but obviously for this instance, we've used it to glue this logo in and we've let it dry overnight. And now that looks pretty good. And obviously it's also fixed in there, which is fantastic. So next thing, We've got our layout, we've got a photograph. So I've got my anti-cut gloves on, I've got my scalpel ready to go, and we can start cutting some foam. And it's probably worth explaining to you, uh, anyone watching who's considering making their own power tool wall. And the question is, where do you start? You know, you've done this huge layout and then which item is it best to start with? Because we've gone for these two big items, top center, it felt quite important to start with those. So all I've done there is measured the gap left and the gap right. And we've got 52 centimeters on each side. So I know that my recip saw is nice and center. The next item, we're gonna come down to this bottom row because obviously the bottom row is the next thing we want to be evenly spaced all the way across. This blower's got like the, the motor body kind of protrudes out the back and it, it, it's standing like 60 mil off the back. So if I cut round that first, we can sink that into the foam separately and that'll then drop the blower 60 mil down and it will sit a lot flusher to the foam. This is only a temporary kind of hole that we're cutting here. This will disappear when we cut the whole shape out. It doesn't really matter how neat it is. It just matters that we've cut down at least 60 mil. So the whole of this little protrusion sinks in. The, the protrusion that's coming out the back of this blower will just push straight in there. And now we can see it, fit, it sits a lot closer. I mean, we've still got, you know, obviously chance for a parallax error, but also it's holding it still, it can't move. So it's kind of a, a win-win there. So now we just want to twist it, make sure it's in the right spot. Yeah, and I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got a nice even gap, top and bottom. And yeah, let's cut around it. We've only got a few items left. Uh, we've just done this um, tube, which is for the Hoover. And what we've done is, rather than cutting all the way through, like we've done with the power tools, we've cut down about 60 mil, and we've peeled back all the layers. And then we've used a bit of our red foam, and we've cut the same shape and then placed it in the bottom. And that way we've still got the dual color, well, we've still got the variation that we're gonna have when it's on the wall but obviously it's shallower so the tube doesn't drop all the way in. And we're gonna do the same here. I'm gonna show you how you do it. So we're gonna place this item where it's going, which is there, I'm happy with that. And then same as all the other items, we just hold it in place and we just trace cut around it, 90 degrees or perpendicular to the foam at all times. And we're just trace cutting around. And then once that's done, we can take the item away and then we can go back. And with this item again, we wanna cut down 60 mil. So when I've done that, I can take the gloves off, make it easier for peeling. And then we're just pushing our finger down the end and I'm gonna try and pull back a few layers here just to make it quicker. That's about 30 mils worth of foam I've pulled out. We'll go again, we'll peel out a couple more layers. We can take the piece of foam that we've just cut out and removed 
and we're going to put that on top of our red foam and we'll just cut around that shape to create a piece of foam that can then just drop in the bottom. And that's perfect. We've got a nice clear visual difference there. So when the tool, when the item's in there, you can see it. And obviously when it's out, not in there, you can see that it's missing. Perfect. So one of the other challenges we've got on this wall is we've got one item which isn't part of the 18 volt LXT range. We've got this heat gun. Now the heat gun obviously has got a two, three meter cable with it. Having a cable loose or coiled up there is gonna look, it's gonna spoil the look of the, um, of the wall. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna create a cavity behind here to loop the cable and then it'll keep it nice and hidden. So the way we do that is by flipping over the foam. So we're gonna take all the tools out, we're gonna to flip it over, and then we're gonna work from the back on this piece to cut out a little cavity behind there for the cable. It does need to be quite a big cavity. So we can literally just freehand a half moon or a bit of a crescent there. And we wanna leave a nice, thick piece of foam at the front, otherwise it will look visually distorted. But we can peel back at least 40 mil of foam. And the last thing we need to do, make an allowance for where the cable comes out of the heat gun. When we flip it over, we can see it's not affected the front at all, but we can now make the allowance for cable, make a small incision here. We're not going to cut all the way. And that'll be enough then. We can then tuck that underneath and we can see there there's absolutely there's, there's tons of room, there's no shortage of space. And then that tool fits in there, lovely. Now this here is a big time save what we're going to show you. Uh, we save all of the pieces that we uh, have cut out. So every single item that we've cut out, we've saved the piece. So here you can see we've got one of the inserts from the drill and that just slots back in. And what that does is it basically effectively ma perfectly masks off the rear of the sheet. So when we now use spray glue and go over the top, we don't have to worry about getting any overspray inside all of the nice neat cutouts we've just done. So now we can follow we can cover the whole of the back of the sheet in spray glue without fear of getting glue where we don't want it. And once we've given it a full coating all the way around, we can just pull out all of the, the shapes, stick them all in the bin, and then glue it up on the wall. So let's just get a nice even coating. What we wanna be doing is making sure we're getting glue on all these little gaps. And then as quick as we can, we pop all these inserts out. So we want to push them all out and get them straight in the bin. So I can feel that glue's drying a little bit already, so we're gonna go around and just give it a bit extra. Right, let's go and get it up on the wall, quick. Just to run you through how we've secured this, we've mounted, we didn't wanna glue the red sheets of foam to the wall in case we ever wanna take it down and change it. So instead, we've put multiple screws across the sheets. We started with the border, and then afterwards, I've put screws behind where you can't see to secure all of those sheets really nice and tightly to the wall. And then we've glued this piece to that piece. But we do have a, one more consideration, and that is up here, we've got a recip saw, which is really heavy. We've got our hammer drill, SDS drill, and we've got our planer. So we've got three heavy items. Everything else is relatively, um, or comparatively quite light. 
So on particularly this item here, we're gonna put in some extra screws. We're gonna start with one here. We're gonna cut a flap in the foam. And because it's uh, obviously it peels, we can just put our finger in there and then just pull back a small piece of foam. And then behind that, we can drop our screw. And that way it will be invisible. Right then, so now we've glued that up and screwed it, obviously we've got to let it dry. So next thing we're gonna focus on is getting this charger mounted on this wall here. Now there are a couple of ways to do this and the way I'm gonna do it is possibly not a way I would recommend. I think you can now get mounts for these. The six screws that hold uh, this together and I've already taken those out. And once you've taken those six screws out, the top just lifts off. We now need to fix this to the wall. That's, that's the approach we're gonna take. But right now, we're only gonna use one screw to attach it to the wall. Now, you can see there's numerous spots behind here that it's just plastic. Right in the middle there, there's a nice bit of just plastic we can just drill straight through. So once we've got it level, all we have to do then is use a little pilot drill to just mark up these holes. So we're just gonna put it through each of the six holes that hold the front on. And because this is a cabinet, I've got access to the rear of the screws. So I can literally just pilot these through. Once we've done that, we can take the screw back out. So here I'm gonna go for an eight mil drill bit. This is, this is more than enough. So all of the screws that we just take, took out, we wanna put them all back in and you wanna make sure that they go through the hole because it's gonna be a nightmare to try and get them into the holes afterwards. So if we've got all the screws back in there, now we can slowly but carefully use our one pivoting screw to get it back into position without tipping it over. Now, if you don't knock it and you go nice and slowly, and all you need to do here is make sure you line up the pilot holes with those holes that you've just drilled. Now, what this gives you access to, you can see this screw here poking out. Now, I can access the screw head from the back, and you can see here, I can turn the screw. And that allows me then to put the front on to secure it nice and tightly. All six screws will pull in tightly, but now I can put a few more screws in the back here to really mount it nice and solid to the wall. Put that back on. We've got the, we'll put the USB. So we're just gonna tighten that up now. And that's dropped into position nicely. Right then, that's, that's mounted to there really well. It's also, the cover's gone back on quite nicely. The main thing is, does it still work? So let's plug it in. First thing, do the lights come on? Yes, now does it charge? Fantastic, job done. Right, onto the stealth mounts now. Let's get the batteries mounted. So I don't have to put pencil marks all over the place. Try and rough a layout. Then, so that is the foam wall done and that's the battery charger done and now we've finished up the stealth mounts so we put up five and five and they work perfectly we can still get all five back all, all of the batteries and we've kept a space up here because we did mention that we wanted to build a little shelf for this and a shelf for this now sadly this is a bit too big if I put that up there it's gonna block the uh, angle driver and the planer so we're probably gonna put that in this cupboard 
and not worry about the light, it's a bit bulky, but we will put up a little shelf for the circular saw because that's a little bit smaller and we've got these brackets here which work perfectly for this. They'll just hold it front and back and that'll be able to just slot in there and that should look ideal. So we're just going to put those up quick and then we'll get all of the tools in the wall. Perfect, that's a nice little cradle for that. And that is everything I want to do over that side. So right, let's try and get all of the tools in there and see what it looks like. Right, so that wraps up the Makita wall version two and I'm well pleased with it. We've made significant improvements on this wall versus the first version. We've obviously used our new shadow foam material which is much more durable and hard wearing. We've managed to squeeze in some more tools. We've got the heat gun added. We've got the new versions of a few tools. We've also added the air blower. We've taken away the batteries and we've put them in stealth mounts so they're much easier to use. We've also put in this twin charger here which is wired in and it's ready to use, screw to the wall. And we've got the circular saw up here on its own mount as well. So this, for me, is a significant improvement on the last one. But we would love to see what ideas you have. We'd love to hear your ideas on what we could do to make this better or what we could do for another foam wall. We've got a couple more ideas in the pipeline of foam walls. We're toying with the idea of a Nerf gun wall, potentially. And we've got a few other things in the pipeline. So. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We'd love to see your projects. If you share them and tag us on Instagram, we'll put them on our wall of fame and we'll share them with everyone else. And make sure you subscribe to the channel because we've got videos coming every single week. We've got more phone walls coming. We've got more big ideas in the pipeline. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.